do this. Tell me, y'all. I feel like every single person who tells you that they struggle with sleep, they also scroll in their phone right before bed and scroll in their phone in the morning. got seven levels of sleep and i think you meant sleep deprivation because that's in the thumbnail um we're about to find out what they're talking about i'm gonna organize this by the destruction it causes to your life starting with awesome. level one the insomniac now this is based on two things the ones who do stimulants to stay awake for days on end do and TikTok. When a bender or the people who cannot sleep and well neither are great they both often suffer from hallucinations <laughs> what do you say to me take this oh, my hand i ain't gonna take that i gotta get some sleep I must be hallucinating. I mean, what even is that? After huh? you stay awake for too long, your brain unironically starts to dysfunction, and to add to that, repetitive sleep deprivation can lead to full-on brain damage. But yet again, so do I don't think I've ever had a hallucination from being extremely tired. I mean, I remember for Carby with the sub, the worst it would get is like when I, I when I would really pull all-nighters, I used to have locks. And like if like a lock moved in the back, it would spook me more. But like other than that, like I don't know, I don't know. I'm a full on hallucination though. Who does half the stuff in this world? Damn, what, what happened to you, bro? I pulled an all nighter. Oh hell no! Deep bad voice. And here we are with level two, dangerously disoriented. I remember back when I was in school, I'd spend all night on my phone and then sleep for maybe two hours, and then proceed to wake up for school. And I'd really have to say this with harps of honesty: don't do this. It's bro, I'm telling y'all. I'm telling y'all. I feel like every single person who tells you that they struggle with sleep, they also scroll in their phone right before bed and scroll in their phone in the morning. I still do this. I do this occasionally. But I'm telling you, if you can get good at just like not, at, if you can just get good at not scrolling on your phone crazy, I'm telling you it could change your life, bro. Like... What I try to do is I try to, um, like, when I lay down in the bed, I set a 15-minute timer and scroll on my phone until the 15-minute timer's up, and then I go to sleep. Sometimes it works. Other times it doesn't. All I'm saying is the times it works, I sleep like a baby. I sleep like a baby. This is extremely dangerous. So when I was driving to school, I was nodding off. And even after that I arrived at school, I started to fall out of my chair, and that Yo. would jolt me back awake. So today we're going to talk about the history of... Oh. Good morning, sunshine. Go to detention. I used to hate the good morning sunshine thing with teachers, bro. Oh my god. Right now. And if I'm calling you out with that one, go to sleep after this video. There was even- It's blue light rays from the screen that makes your brain think it's time to be awake. That's really what it is? In a study comparing drinking alcohol and driving versus driving with being awake for long periods of time. For example, being awake for 24 hours is the equivalent of a 0.10 blood alcohol level, which going off the average American man's weight, that is about six drinks. Dang! Do you know why I'm pulling you over? What's up? No, not, not a clue. You dumb or something, you literally just hit a kid. No, no, no. That, that was a dream. Huh? Huh? And then there's... Have y'all ever like driven tired? Not to the point where like you're nodding off, but to the point where you don't remember how you got home. That should be scared. Oh, that's a curse. That's a curse. Bro, it's definitely been mad times. I'm like, I had like a 30 minute drive or something and I like compartmentalize the whole thing and like park and I'm like, I don't remember any of the process that took me. Like, I don't remember turning on my blinker. I don't remember taking on exits. I don't, I don't even know if I hit someone or not. Well, three, the forgetful one. Let's keep in mind, it's better to sleep than to stay awake all night studying. So I'd like to believe sleeping is overpowered. I'm sure we've all been to school when you didn't sleep well and suddenly your brain has to find its way in the dream realm to reality. I say most accidents in life are caused by some form of impairment. Hey dad, was I planned? No, you're just a happy little impaired accident. What? And I mean, this is no surprise, since sleeping is where your brain transfers your short-term memory to long-term memory. But this is okay. all part of the dangerous things, such as weed, alcohol, and all their drugs. It's the all the drugs! Is, when you take those substances at night, it interrupts your REM sleep. And so if you use the jazz cabbage to sleep, you'll never... Tr and that's so crazy, too, because I know so many people who, like, smoke weed to sleep. And I can't bring myself to think that that's like, why? I don't, huh? How does it help you sleep? Would it not make you more anxious? Yo, yo, we drink coffee and take pre-workout. We're doing, oh yeah, caffeine is most definitely a drug. And I've always said that. I've always said that. But like, that's, I feel like that's a tad different. I don't, I'm not saying it's better or worse, but I do feel like it's different. Doesn't smoking hype you up? That's what I would think, right? I know it would make me, like, I, I know it would make me tweak out. Even though I've never done it, but like I'm assuming, like, 
Weed is good meth. Wait, weed is good, meth is bad. Don't do hard drug, guys. Okay. Truly get a good night's rest. Oh, wow. Why do I feel so? Yeah, weed has different symptoms for different people. I can, yeah, yeah, that's why it's, because medical weed, my mom actually has medical weed for her anxiety, and it does good things for her. Uh, oh. You literally poisoned yourself. And now we have arrived at level four. Yield awesome. 888 schedule. The what golden is standard is completely whack. It's the idea of the 888 schedule, which if you don't know what that is, it's eight hours of sleep, eight hours of work, and eight hours of free time. But in reality, this never plays out the way you'd assume. And it usually plays out as a sacrifice to all things that are good for your health. Instead of cooking, you eat fast food. Instead of getting a full night's rest, you shock on an energy drink. And in the long uh -huh. term, this will deteriorate all aspects of you. All right, after the commute, the unpaid breaks, and cooking, I'm left with five hours of free time but I could just sleep five hours instead. At the end of the day, I firmly believe that most societal ills are based around a non-functioning system. The path of least resistance uh -huh. will consistently be the fundamental outcome of the majority. And when the system isn't sustainable without mental health deterioration, we will see the increase in drug use, crime, and- I do think, um, yeah, you're, the amount of sleep that you get drastically affects your quality of life for sure. Obesity. But what are those things? Coping mechanisms. So what does that mean? Well, in the stance of society, in itself, it leads to the mentally soft becoming self-destructive. I mean, let me frame a scene for you here. Oh man, I'm late for work, I gotta go. Yeah, I'll take an eight-piece tendy meal with a large coffee. Oh, that caffeine crash. Chicken tenders and coffee is absolutely deplorable. If you've ever consumed chicken tenders and then coffee within five minutes of each other, you need to get something checked. That is, that is actually insane. That is crazy. Just hitting. Oh, time for some more caffeine. I'll play some video games to keep awake. Oh, shoot. I, I, I gotta sleep. I only got four hours till I gotta wake up. Oh, I'm already in bed. I'll, I'll brush my teeth tomorrow. And then there's level five. What is this frame? The what is this frame? The sacrifice. To keep this simple and clean, this is pretty much means you just have to make all the required sacrifices to get your sleep in. This could mean not going out with your friends or playing video games, limiting blue light before- Oh, this is me. This is me as hell. This is me as hell. Bro, one of my friends could be getting married, and if it's past 10 o'clock, I'm not going. I'm not gonna- Actually, um, when I said I was hanging out with Tommy and, um, and Cloud yesterday, bro, we was having a great conversation. We was having an amazing conversation, actually. That bit hit 11 o'clock. I was like, all right, guys. Tommy Tommy was even like, yo, I got mad energy now. I was like, great. Use that energy at home. I, I got to go to bed, bro. Or sleeper, even to the extent of scenes. Gang, I, I prioritize my sleep so heavily, bro. So I'm like, off the start of the morning to get your You too young to be this old. I'm only going to stay young if I get my eight out. I need eight. I need eight. I need eight, bro. Circadian rhythm started. Unfortunately, our bodies and brains are still assimilated to the caveman time, so we must return to monkey to live properly. Return to monkey? I'm still here. I'm I'm sleeping good. I don't know about y'all. Uh, good morning, America. All right, let's get it. I mean, really. At what are you going to do when you have a kid? That kid's going to have a bad time. My kid is going to be in bed asleep 9 o'clock. That nigga going to grow up to hate. Oh, it's a curse. He, he, she gonna hate me, bro. Make your choice. Suffer now or later. You either will feel sleep deprived all the next day, or you can sacrifice an hour or two of your free time. And while I know it's not ideal, it's the way of life. That is, unless you find your way out of the rat race. And even still, sometimes it remains that way even after escaping it. Alright, I become a landlord. Let's go. Here's the escape from the rat race. Hey, my toilet is broken. Can you come and fix it? It's flooding the place. 2 a.m. is crazy. Having to fix the toilet at 2 a.m. is Bitch, insane. what? Now the strange one. Level 6. The obsessive dream chaser. When we think of sleep, we usually think of getting arrested, but every night you dream, okay. even if you don't remember it. These are the whimsical masters of sleep, so much so that- How are y'all's dreams, bro? The thing about my dreams is like, I sleep in episodes. Like, I'll sleep for like one hour, wake up, sleep for like two hours, wake up, sleep for- Like, I'll have a dream and then wake up and I have another dream. I don't know what that is. Like, my dreams feel like SNL skits. It's like a bunch of different scenarios. But they can control their dreams, and I'd say at this point, you might as well be considered a master of sleep, but not in the traditional sense. Ooga booga, I'm the boogeyman. You really think you're in control? Who do you think you are? Wait, who am I? Wait, where am I? You're in my head. Boo. 
There you go. Fully embrace life of keeping records of the currency of your dreams and the symbolism is a great idea. I like to believe this is an. I get nightmares a lot. I don't think that's good, bro. I, I can't. I get nightmares like extremely rarely, but when I do, they be traumatizing me, bro. Like they be cooking. Aspect of the full embrace. Well, we are definitely diving into escapism territory when it's anything outside of our natural life. You got to be aware when you do something to be avoidant of responsibility, you are partaking in escapism. The two polarities you use for measurements, mental resistance will show you that all fear is just illusion. To change the unit of measurement will directly change the result, meaning that all mental resistance is just a wrong set of measurement polarities. What the fuck are you talking about? Well, what gives you anxiety? Talking to women, I suppose. So the measurement you are using is a scale of her rejecting you or accepting you. But the issue is okay. if the slider is moved away from the acceptance side even a tiny bit, you will have fear and doubt. And unfortunately, that will spiral you into insecurity and much farther bringing you down to a rejection. Well, how should I judge it then? So simply, you need to make it where it's an upward spiral of self-reinforcement instead of a downward one of self-doubt. The way to do this is by switching the two poles of measurement. Well, okay, I'm following. What are the two poles of measurement? All right, you ready for this? Yes. So instead of seeing a scale of rejection or acceptance, you instead see it as an approach of self-doubt versus self-acceptance. I mean, if she doesn't seem interested, it's okay because you push towards acceptance of self. And that means the results of the interaction were never the weight of the situation, but instead the acceptance of the result. Also, before you even partake in the interaction, you are at the bottom of the scale, meaning once you take action, it's an upward spiral to the top and reinforces the top. Well Huh? Well, what's your source for this information? I've had a dream about this two nights in a row, and I had to figure out what it meant. And now for the one and only, level seven, the sleep doctor. This is the part where I'm going to drop all the nerdy details, since let's be real, to be at the top level, one must understand the conditions Mr. Sandman has allotted, since without strict guidelines on sleep, he won't ever be on a perfect sleep schedule. What's, what's going on? Who the hell are you? I'm Mr. Sandman. Go to sleep now. Ah. So let's start off with some absolute peak dork information. Chronotypes, okay. and this is simply sleep patterns, since supposedly there are four different ones, so starting with the most common being. I'm not gonna lie, I was expecting this to be a hee hee ha ha video. I feel like I have to take notes to understand this. But hey man, that was my reaction to seven levels of sleep.